Hi there, welcome back. I'm Melinda Bigley. I'm a National Baby Lock Educator. And today I wanted to introduce to you guys something I am so excited about. I recently got a Baby Lock Triumph serger and I cannot tell you how much fun I'm having. It is so, so fabulous. Honestly, I can't imagine not having a serger in my life ever again. And it is something that I thought, and I don't know um, how you guys feel about sergers, but what I always thought is that it was exclusive to sewing clothing. And I'm far from a seamstress. I, as you know, if you've watched the show before, I am a quilter and embroiderer. And um, on, uh, as an aside, I've got a Facebook group called So Blessed Quilting and Embroidery. And if you haven't gone on to that and, and filled out a couple questions and joined that group, please do so. I'm able to interact with people a whole lot more in that um, venue than in this one. So, um, but I do, I do not upload all of these videos to Facebook. That's more um, where we share photos and talk about things, answer questions and all that. Uh, but in this video today, I wanted to show you how simple it is to do a, uh, it's a three thread rolled edge. Um, and actually it's a three thread overlock rolled edge. I'm learning the vernacular um, just as I'm learning how to do these things. What the three, th three thread overlock rolled edge allows us to do is to take a little piece of wire and place it in, in what I'm going to do today to show you is making our own ribbon with this little piece of organza. Um, and this is, I wanted to show this to you too, this is a rolled hem and that is clearly not on organza, but this is, um, and this was actually a um, longer, a longer uh, length stitch, then I shortened it to about a one on this rolled hem and you can see it is absolutely spectacular. So what that serger does is it trims that edge with its blade and then rolls that edge under and gives it that beautiful rolled edge hem on the side on, on you know whatever it is, whatever your projects are. Um, and you can put decorative thread which I'm having the most fun with. Decorative thread goes into the loopers. Um, and that, I haven't done anything less than an eight yet. Right now I'm working, in fact, I can show you some of this. Um, one thing I'm absolutely loving is this, first of all, I love the um, Madeira 12 weight, is phenomenal. Um, I've recently gotten into, it's called Pearl Crown Rayon, and it is, I believe, also, don't quote me on this, but I wanna say, I wanna say this is an eight, a weight. Um, um, this is a, just an example of the beautiful uh, decorative thread. And they're, they're threads that you, you uh, only place in your loopers. I, from what I understand, you don't put them in your needles. I'm learning that still. Um, but basically, I wanted to just show you. I've not been doing this very long, um, but I wanted you to see how easy it is to, to do these things and how many things that you're able to do. And I will add to that. As I learn, I will show you guys what I'm learning so that we can kind of do this together. And I've got a book over there somewhere. I was supposed to have it over here, but I don't. This is a quick reference thread guide. And with this little thread guide, it gives you virtually every scenario that you could ever desire and how to thread your machine. And here's the thing, what you're able to do Essentially, it's kind of like now. I'm a terrible cook, so it doesn't totally cross over for me. If you have a recipe, you can pretty much cook is what they say. That's not the case for me. However, in this particular venue, if you use the recipe, which is your thread guide and your specific threads and all that, you do come up with a wonderful project. If you could eat this, I'd be a fabulous cook. Not so much. But I did want to show you a couple things. And I'm so happy that I can do these things and forget about them and still get up and do them. I've done, been doing things that have to be done perfectly and very happy to be back in this world of the YouTube part. 
This is the Triumph Inspirational Guide, and this is something that Baby Lock does for each of their machines, which is so much fun because it goes above and beyond um, the manuals. And they've got, again, you've got recipes for everything. So this is, for example, this is a little page on creating braid and trim. So you can take your recipe, which is right here, and feed the threads that you love in there. As far as braiding and trim, you would generally um, kind, of, kind of spotlight your decorative thread because that's really what comes out, obviously, in that situation. And this, in fact, this has the four thread overlock still that I, that I actually sewed off of that. And this is just an example of the four thread overlock on that. Um, and then this, I just wanted to show you, this is a, a different kind of, I have a bookmark in here, a Tula pink bookmark, so it's covering this part. But this is also, what this is, is it, it's a serger accessory and attachments from Baby Lock. And this is the inspirational guide for that. And this is also wonderful. This applies to all the different sergers that Baby Lock has, which all of them are absolutely fantastic. Um, this just happens to be an eight thread machine. Um, there are four thread and they're, uh, they're spectacular. Um, this will show you, you know, you've got all of your feet in here, which um, I'll show you actually, show you a project that you can, this is something that's really exciting and I've, I've just recently learned how to do this as well. You can make ruffles very easily and it's just a matter of, um, affecting a certain little it's the uh, gosh I'm forgetting what it's called but it's a section of your machine where you're able to slow down you've got two feed dogs one in front and one behind it and what you're able to do is affect the speed so one will go quicker than the other and if you have a flat fabric on the top and you put your fabric that you want to be ruffled one will go faster than the other other and create those ruffles for you and at the same time hold the back fabric flat, which is very, very exciting for those of us that find those things exciting. If you're watching this, you're probably in agreement with me because otherwise you wouldn't be watching a sewing thing. Here is, and you can tell that I'm speaking a little quicker today because this is just something that I absolutely love and I hope to share that with you because I always talk about finding your, your joy in your sewing room this has absolutely up that tenfold for me. Um, the world of surging is just so much fun. I, I, it's just opened up a whole new world of decorative stuff that you can embellish your quilts with, you can embellish clothing with. Again, I'm not such a clothing hound, but if you are, you're able to do miraculous things with it. Um, and then you can add ribbon, which you can do on your sewing machine. It's just that the the serger allows you to do um, it allows you to do some different things with a, a more secure edging and things like that. Um, this is the foot kit that you can get for the for the Baby Lock Triumph. And again, you guys know I'm a feet hound in this. This is actually comes with I believe it's actually I can tell you exactly because it has this wonderful little book. And there are 29. So this is the little serger reference book and it shows you each of the feet that it comes with. So you've got little pages essentially and they each have a little picture of the feet and you can just keep them stored in here. A lot of people don't. They put them in other things, but I personally love these cases and the, the, you know just to have the pictures on there and I keep them all in the same spot. So that is very handy and I'm in love with this also. So what I'd like to do is show you how easy it is to do a rolled hem on organza with wire. It doesn't sound easy and I just lost the toughest part. I will tell you the toughest part about this is handling the wire because it just fell, which is not something new, but it gets twisted and it, it'll fight you a little bit, but you'll win. Believe me, just keep fighting with it, fight back, and you will make it do what you want. See, you just straighten it out, and it will straight, straighten out back for you. 
So we've got our organza and our wire. And I've got, um, show you, get you guys over here so you can actually see what we're doing. Okay, so I'm gonna pop this little foot off so you can see this. So it's a very simple, get my needle out of the way here, and always take your, your needle, or I'm sorry, your, yeah, raise the presser foot, just pop that foot off real easily. And as you can see, this is just a, looks like a, a kind of an intimidating foot, but there's a little hole right here where you place the wire and that goes right through this back here. And then you run it right through that hole and it goes right underneath the foot and gets caught in that little ditch and it holds it exactly where you need it. So I'm gonna show you how easy this is and hopefully it will behave usually when things go wrong. It's on film as most of you know that do, do these things on film. Actually, it's not film anymore, is it? For those of you that are my age or older, you know what I'm talking about. For those of you that aren't, you're wondering what film is. It's a thing that records what you do. And I'm going to just grab my tweezers and kind of pull this wire. Sometimes it gets stuck right on that. I'm gonna pull that right out the back. You really want to have about five or six inches of wire behind your foot. Put that back down. And later on when I, I will do a video on how to, um, how to thread and all that, that is something in the past that's been very intimidating for people. Um, but there's no fear in this one with the, the uh, Triumph, it's just so easy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make sure that wire is where I want it behind it and in front of it. And I wanna keep that as straight as I possibly can. And then I've got the organza placed just to the right of the blade because I want to, and, and this is a choice for you, you do not have to start this with the needle in the fabric with a rolled hem. What, what I want to do is cut off a little bit of the side of this so I'm choosing how much I want to do that. So I'm just gonna start surging and I'm gonna kind of guide the wire behind and now I don't have to guide it behind it. It's in there and I'm just gonna guide the fabric and kind of hold the wire. And when you're just starting out like I am, you kind of take it a little bit easy. It's not a race. That would be interesting, though, to have a surging race. So I'm just going to let this, my fabric is longer than my wire, so I'm going to let this wire run out. I'm going to surge all the way down the organza. And unlike a sewing machine, I can run this. Kind of gently guide it from the back straight behind. And look at that. You've got a gorgeous rolled edge with, as you can see, wait for it, wire. And now we've just made our own ribbon. So exciting. And actually what I'll do is I'll show you how easy this is and this is the part that just gets shaved off, trimmed off that side. So I'm gonna, you know, I might as well just show you how easy it is to do the other side. And you don't have to, obviously, you don't have to have the, the wire, although it's very simple to do. I'm gonna pull this thread out back here.
and this is how very simple it is. I honestly find myself smiling to myself or to my surger when I'm making these things, when I'm just learning, because I go through this inspirational guide and just try different things, try different stitches and techniques, and I just can't help smile to myself because it is so easy, it's so much fun, and it's so pretty. It adds so much beauty to the world. How beautiful is that? It's just gorgeous. Now you can see the difference. This doesn't have the, the wire in it, so it's not going to have the stay that the wire does. But that's a choice. You can do this, you know, if you're doing, let's say you're doing a beautiful scarf um, and you've got this beautiful rolled edge. It's all whatever project you're working for, working on, whatever you're making. You pretty much, sorry ribbon companies, but you pretty much, for this kind of, of ribbon, you can make your own ribbon out of the, your favorite fabric, whatever it is. Um, and it's just about the easiest thing in the world to do. And so much fun. So I have to share a, a story with you about, for those of you that love your machines, most of us name our machines. It might sound weird to some people, but we do. And my this particular serger is Puffy B. And the reason that is, and I tried to print out a picture of my, my buddy. It's named after my favorite hummingbird and his name is Puffy G. And he got his name because he is, this is a very strange story, but it's our favorite hummingbird, so I'll share it with you. And um, his name is Puffy G because he, got, he guarded his little hummingbird food, which is right in front of our kitchen window and uh, my daughter named him George, for George Washington, the wonderful general that he was. And this little guy guarded this food all winter, snow, everything, didn't migrate and sat there and protected his food and virtually kept all the other hummingbirds at bay. So then we kind of thought, well, he's kind of gangster too because he just holds this thing so well. So we figured he needed a little bit of the gangster name. That, and here's the other thing, the puffy part comes from, I think, all the food that he was eating because he's a little bit shorter and a little puffier than the rest of the hummingbirds, so he got the puffy. And to give him the gangster flair, it's puffy G. So now with the wonderful Triumph being able to do a million different things, kind of like puffy G was fighting everything off and doing a hundred things, the, my Triumph is now puffy B, obviously B for baby lock. So there is your useless story for the day. And hopefully, maybe it'll make you smile. Maybe you'll think I'm crazy. Either way, that's fine too. So I hope you're all doing very, very well. I've really missed communicating with you. It's been a while. I've been doing a lot of other things in, the, in the, uh, this wonderful world of sewing. But I'm back now, hopefully on track with doing more videos of this kind. So I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're in your sewing rooms and making things that you love for people you love and brightening up the world that can be frustrating and keeping it out of your sewing rooms and just letting in the joy and the happiness and the sunshine. And it's spring now, so make things with flowers and pretty birds and anything that makes you happy. You don't have to do flowers and birds. Whatever it is that you love that makes you happy, surround yourself with it and make something pretty. I will talk to you all soon. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.